first he was working at Sony. You know, I was Sony the first at, label you worked at? That was the first label I worked at, like that I got an official check from. You okay, know, stop. Internship. Was, was, me. Okay, because because internships are important. A lot of people think that they're above internships. Nah. How many internships did you take? I took a few. I actually started out with Sony at Epic Records. Shout out to Lamont Bowles and Dwayne Cunningham and OJ Wedlaw and everybody that was there. Nelson Tobota, um, Money Nels. Um, so we started. I started out there, humble, okay. packing boxes, doing that stuff, but learning. And then actually, I went to um, Penalty Records, working for Neil Levine. Woo! Yes, so Sean Pecos, Eric Parler, um, my man Chi Chi that was there, uh, El Ness. It was a whole team there that, again, it was it was learning from a major label to now this is an independent company and how we do things. We cover retail, we cover radio, we cover college radio, and all of these grassroots efforts that that can help you find an audience. And then from there, oh, Ma Martin Moore was there also. Shout out to Martin Moore. Um, and from there, I went to Uptown Records, and I was working with the wildest crew, Super Mario. Uh, shoot, man. You know, Uptown was, it was great because it was an urban culture that was more rocking as an independent, but they had major label power. You mm -hmm. know, we had heavy hits, Joe to see, Mary, um, all of that stuff. So, you know, I did that uh, under a guy named Jerry, and um, we worked in marketing, and that was really it was a dope experience, um, and then I started really rocking because what happened was I sort of got out of the music business for two seconds. Um, you know, one of the things that you do as an intern is you just run pe stuff for people. So running clothes for video shoots here, there, whatever. And I met a guy named Phil Pabone uh, who was working at Mecca USA. And Phil Pabone took me under his wing, him, Tony Shellman, and that whole family. And they actually gave me my first check. They actually said, you know what, we want to hire you as a grassroots manager for marketing in fashion. And I had no idea, no nothing with fashion. All I knew was that Mecca had dope clothes and I wanted these free shirts. And That's I right. took that <clears throat> took that passion and said, you know what? We going we going to rock. So I started hitting off different people in the music business with the clothes. Uh started doing fashion shows all over America, all the black colleges and connected with artists through that. Um and then uh I started uh I actually connected with a guy I worked with at Epic and Corey Rooney. And I, I remember giving him some clothes and he was like, yo, where you get this from? So I come to the studio, went to the studio and um, boom, man, he, he just took me under his wing. At the time, he was a senior vice president of A&R for Epic Records. Working, uh, working with, um, was he working with J-Lo at that time at the beginning of his career? Way, this is way before J-Lo. This is, is way before J-Lo. Yeah, he's still working with like, um, let's see, Mary and... All the artists on Epic, from Brownstone to like, uh, I, I don't know, there were so many artists at that time uh, that we was working on. Uh, Mariah was a big one, because she was on Columbia, and he worked more directly under Tommy Matola. Yep. And um, he took me under his wing, and we really, you know, that really took my career off, because it taught me an etiquette uh, about the business that came from a, an, a serious executive level on uh, how to be, how to operate, you know, how to focus, what to focus on, um, quality, quality of music, quality of what a real recording should sound like, you know, the process of recording, um, true mixing, true mastering, um, taking it all apart and doing it all over again if we had to, um, you know, so we, you know, that that was awesome. We was working with track masters and Diddy and every single person. At, at that time, were you getting a check? So, yes, we started, he started, so Mariah started a label called Crave Records. Mm -hmm. And they, they hired me on a Crave to run the, um, yeah, I did so many jobs. So I was head of uh, video, grassroots video promotion or video promotion. Then I started running the street team under Morris Landy. And then, um... Everything was going great. They hired me as an a and &R. So I had a group called Negro League on the label. And that was a great experience because at that time was the first time, I tell people all the time, I didn't really know the music business until a guy named Michael Kushner and Corey Rooney, they pulled me to the side. And, and Michael Kushner actually sat me down. He was the head of legal at our time. Now I think he's head of legal for all Warner Music. But he showed me actually how to read a contract. He sat me down and actually said, you know, you got seven guys on this in this group. This is how much they're gonna make. This is how much the label's gonna make. 
this is how the point system works. And um, I realized at that point that there's no way these artists were going to make money. They were no, there's no way that these guys were going to actually make money from their sound recordings and the royalties from the sales of these recordings. Just wasn't, there was just not enough to go around. Um, and in my mind, I was like, you know, this is where DigiWax, I guess, was sort of born because from that point on, I said, you know, for people to really make money, you have to go from digital direct to the consumer. And that was the whole concept of DigiWax. But before that, um, so yeah, so I was at um, Craven. That's, that was my first check, working under Mariah and learning from her as well um, and traveling and um, being sort of like an all-around sort of player on the, on the court, you know. Can we take a, can I take a minute and interject here? Because I think your story is so interesting. And I think um, for anybody who's watching this, I hope that they're catching these gems and I hope that they're really pulling from this information that you're giving them. You took at least three unpaid internships that I heard. Um, you worked in very humble mail room. You're packing boxes. You go over and like, like I love your story because before you got settled into the world of marketing and promotion, you were working at Mecca and, you know, doing whatever you can do over there, putting clothes on artists' back, running the streets and really trying to blow up that brand. You pulled in so many names that are now um, the heads of industry, you know, the Sean Peckers of the world. You, you just were name dropping, but these are people you came up with, you know, yeah. day one. And I hope people understand that this journey that you're on, I don't care what it is because it's all transferable. I don't care if you're in law, you know, legal, or, you know, you could be a doctor, whatever it is, it takes time. You know, here you are 25 years later, but it took 25 years for you to get to this position of power that you're in. And I'm hoping that anybody who's watching this understands, you know, success doesn't come overnight. It is a process. And along the way is when you are meeting these, you know, we often hear relationship, relationship, relationship. Look at the relationships you developed from early in your career. So I just love, you know, even before we get into the, the, the birth of DigiWax, I love just your journey up to this point because it really shows how you're so connected and why you see the world through the vernacular that you see it in because you started out from the bottom doing any and every job that you possibly could just to get a paycheck. Yeah, man, absolutely. What's up guys? Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love.